Good morning. Welcome to Daily Prayer on Friday the 7th of May. My name is the Reverend Paul Lavender. Thank you for joining me today. The sun is out here in Northampton and I uh, hope that uh, wherever you are you're knowing the warmth of its rays on you today. The air is still cold though and there are some clouds appearing in the distance but uh, I trust that uh, uh, you won't know too much rain or wet sunshine as it's known in some parts of the world. As we come to pray together, let's bow our heads and remember the presence of the Lord with us now. Psalm 14 Fools say in their heart, there is no God. They are corrupt, they do abominable deeds, there is no one who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on humankind to see if there are any who are wise, who seek after God. They have all gone astray, they are all alike perverse. There is no one who does good, no, not one. Have they no knowledge, all the evildoers who eat up my people as they eat bread and do not call upon the Lord? There they shall be in great terror, for God is with the company of the righteous. You would confound the plans of the poor, but the Lord is their refuge. Oh, the deliverance for Israel would come from Zion. When the Lord restores the fortunes of his people, Jacob will rejoice, Israel will be glad. Thanks be to God for his word. Let's pray together, let us pray. Loving and gracious God, your blessings are countless and your love is never ending. As we bring you our thanksgiving this morning, we pray that you will open our hearts to you and to one another that we may share the gifts you have given us in loving service to all people. Lord our God, you've done wondrous things on earth. Guide us as we care for and protect this earth and the places where we live. Grant us joy of heart and may peace dwell with us. We pray in your holy name. Amen. Now let's take a moment of quiet to confess our sins to God, to ask him to bring to mind those things that offend him. And where we recollect them, let's ask for his grace and strength to change. So may almighty God have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Give us time to amend our lives and bring us the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. We're reading through the story of Joseph at the moment and today uh, we begin to read in chapter 41 at the first verse. After two whole years, Pharaoh dreamed that he was standing by the Nile. And there came up out of the Nile seven sleek and fat cows, and they grazed in the reed grass. Then seven other cows, ugly and thin, came up out of the Nile after them, and stood by the other cows on the bank of the Nile. The ugly and thin cows ate up the seven sleek and fat cows. And Pharaoh awoke. Then he fell asleep, and dreamed a second time. Seven ears of grain, plump and good, were growing on one stalk, then seven ears, thin and blighted by the east wind, sprouted after them. The thin ears swallowed up the seven plump and full ears. Pharaoh awoke, and it was a dream. In the morning his spirit was troubled, so he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all its wise men. Pharaoh told them his dreams, but there was no one who could interpret them to Pharaoh. Then the chief cupbearer said to Pharaoh, I remember my faults today. Once Pharaoh was angry with his servants and put me and the chief baker in custody in the house of the captain of the guard. We dreamed on the same night, he and I, each having a dream with its own meaning. A young Hebrew was there with us, a servant of the captain of the guard. When we told him, he interpreted our dreams to us, giving an interpretation to each according to his dream. As he interpreted to us, so it turned out. I was restored to my office, and the baker was hanged. Then Pharaoh sent for Joseph, 
and he was hurriedly brought out of the dungeon. When he had shaved himself and changed his clothes, he came in before Pharaoh, and Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have had a dream, and there is no one who can interpret it. I have heard it said of you that when you hear a dream you can interpret it. Joseph answered Pharaoh, It is not I. God will give Pharaoh a favourable answer. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, In my dream I was standing on the banks of the Nile, and seven cows, fat and sleek, came up out of the Nile and fed in the reed grass. Then seven other cows came up after them, poor, very ugly and thin. Never had I seen such ugly cows in all of Egypt. The thin and ugly cows ate up the first seven fat cows, but when they had eaten them, no one would have known that they had done so, for they were still as ugly as before. Then I awoke. I fell asleep a second time, and I saw in my dream seven ears of grain, full and good, growing on one stalk, and seven ears, withered, thin, and blighted by the east wind, sprouting after them, and the thin ears swallowed up the seven good ears. But when I told it to the magicians, there was no one who could explain it to me. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, Pharaoh's dreams are one and the same. God has revealed to Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good ears are seven years. The dreams are one. The seven lean and ugly cows that came up after them are seven years, as are the seven empty ears blighted by the east wind. They are seven years of famine. It is as I told Pharaoh, God has shown to Pharaoh what he is about to do. There will come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. After them, there will arise seven years of famine, and all the plenty will be forgotten in the land of Egypt. The famine will consume the land. The plenty will no longer be known in the land because of the famine that will follow, for it will be very grievous. And the doubling of Pharaoh's dream means that the thing is fixed by God, and God will shortly bring it about. Now therefore, let Pharaoh select a man who is discerning and wise, and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh proceed to appoint overseers over the land, and take one-fifth of the produce of the land of Egypt during the seven plenteous years. Let them gather all the food of those good years that are coming, and lay up grain under the authority of Pharaoh for food in the cities, and let them keep it. That food shall be a reserve for the land against the seven years of famine that are to befall the land of Egypt, so that the land may not perish through the famine. The proposal pleased Pharaoh and all his servants. Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find anyone else like this, one in whom is the Spirit of God? So Pharaoh said to Joseph, Since God has shown you all this, there is no one so discerning and wise as you. You shall be over my house, and all my people shall order themselves as you command. Only with regard to the throne will I be greater than you. Thanks be to God for his word. So this story of which we read here in Genesis 41 of Pharaoh's dreams. Joseph is protected in prison. He's still knowing the blessing of God. He's still knowing the protection of God, but he still needs help to get out of prison. See, the cupbearer forgot him for two whole years. Joseph had to wait for his God-given gift of interpretation to lead him into Pharaoh's realm. You know, God acts, but not according to our timelines or agendas. When the time is right, Joseph, however, finds himself as prime minister, as it were, of Egypt. The Spirit of God rests on Joseph and even Pharaoh acknowledges the power of Joseph's God. You see, God has taken Joseph and God has elevated Joseph, not Pharaoh, to a position whereby God can speak into the lives of the powerful. And, you know, God will do the same for us if we'll let him. Sometimes, like Joseph, we come to what seems to be a dead end in our lives. 
Joseph could easily have believed that he had no way out. But here he was still trusting God, still relying on God. And when God put him in a place where he could be useful, he relied on God and gave glory to God. May that be the same for you and me, that we will trust God to use us whatever our immediate circumstances, believing that whatever God's will for us is best. God gives us the gifts we need to do the work in which we are called to serve. And wherever we are called to bloom, may God plant us and water us by his Holy Spirit. Let's confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let's pray together. Let us pray. And today we pray for BMS mission worker Tim Darby as he works in northern Uganda seeking to improve access to clean water for rural communities in a particularly remote part of northern Uganda. We ask for protection physically and spiritually and that his work may prosper for the benefit of all around. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as the end of Ramadan approaches and Muslims prepare to celebrate Eid, Secret believers can face many pressures from their families to take part in Muslim prayers. And particularly in Southeast Asia, we pray for Christians that they may know wisdom to know how to respond with love and strength to stand firm in their faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And then we pray for national and local government. And as results continue to emerge after yesterday's elections, we pray, Lord, uh, that you will give wisdom and a commitment to justice and fairness for all, to those who have been elected. We pray for humility for them. And we pray that they may look not only to their in own interests, but to the interests of others too. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now we pray for ourselves and for those we know and love in a moment of quiet prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So may you trust in God's promises to his people, peace, security, blessing, even when they are difficult to believe. May you know that God's news is good news, nourishing, true, even when people tell you it's not. And when you encounter doubt, may you strengthen your belief, guiding you in his perfect will and counsel. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and with those whom you love, to be God's people everywhere this day and forevermore. Amen. God bless you today and keep you safe. Please continue to pray for one another. And if you're able to, please pray for me until we meet again. Goodbye and God bless you.